Do you guys remember as a kid playing that game called Follow the Leader? There was always someone who was assigned to be the leader, and then everybody else in the class had to do whatever the leader said or walk behind the leader in a line and go wherever the leader went. And basically the way you won the game or stayed in the game was following the leader. That's right. Hi, I'm Shauna, and this is my husband, Pete, and we're calling you Family Disciple. Ship. Both of us, <laughs> uh, both of us are ordained ministers with the Church of God, and we simply invite you into our home every day to study the Bible with us. It's actually how we disciple our family, and we hope that it'll encourage you to disciple yours. Uh, this week, we're starting a new chapter, Ephesians chapter five, and today we are going to discuss verses one and two. I'm going to read those, and then we will get started with our discussion. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. So basically what the Apostle Paul here is saying is, as Christians, we're playing the game follow the leader. Uh, we have someone to follow, and that individual that we follow is Jesus Christ himself, our Lord and Savior. And as Christians, our mentality should be to stay in the game, by emulating or following the, the steps of Jesus Christ to a T. That's right. You know, uh, there is a game that I see the kids play and they absolutely annoy one another with it. And they think they can annoy adults with it too, but they really don't. It's called copycat, right? Yeah. Um, and I sit and watch my kids and my little nieces and nephews, and they will play copycat, and it absolutely annoys the one that is the one being copied. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that to me? Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, but uh, there's a lot of pressure sometimes that comes with being the one being copied, with being the leader and sticking out and being authentic. Um, Christ knows about that pressure. Jesus Christ knows the ultimate pressure of coming to the earth, living a perfect life, and uh, being the one that everyone else is supposed to imitate. Right, and it says in verse 2 that the way we do that is by walking in love as Christ hath also loved us. And then it goes on to talk about him sacrificing himself for us. So we have to live sacrificial lives, right? We have to be followers of Jesus Christ in that we're willing to lay our lives down for other people. Uh, for their for their benefit, not just our own. So that means selflessness. And, you know, we live in a society that's very selfish. It's always about me, 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 me. What am I going to get out of it? Where's my share of this? Uh, well, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to benefit from that. Sure. But that's the exact opposite of what following Jesus Christ is. Following Jesus Christ means that that we're willing to sacrifice for others. We're willing to do without so others can have. We're willing to give up our time so that others may uh, benefit from that. And it's not about what we get out of it, but what we can benefit others in showing the love of Christ. That's right. You know, it is so important for us to it, to have that uh, leading of the Holy Spirit so that our, our actions and our words are intentional uh, because we never know just who will be influencing. You know, mm -hmm. the Apostle Paul was opening up and inviting everybody to follow him as he followed Christ and uh, Jesus uh, came to this earth and he lived that perfect life and he showed the love and he showed the dedication and he showed the kindness, the tenderness, uh, but he also exhibited the power. So as we follow Christ in love and as our dedication is that sweet smelling aroma to him, uh, what uh, comes along with that as we imitate him, we also get to imitate that power and that authority wow. that he walks in uh, and that while he walked in here on earth and that he is now eternally. Right, you know, you, and if you read the blog today, I talk about, you know, there's people in this world, and especially youth, who look up to other individuals, right? If you're a basketball player, you probably look up to LeBron James or, or Michael Jordan or someone of that nature. If you're a singer, maybe, I don't know, Taylor Swift or whoever a big singing star is. Or maybe in the business world, you look up and say, man, I'd love to be like Bill Gates or, or someone like that. And, you know, those things are not bad in themselves, but ultimately who we need to be looking up to is Jesus Christ. And we need to be following in the footsteps of those who seek his will in their hearts, right? We need to be picking out role models and influencers in our life who draw us nearer to Jesus, who have us walking on the path of righteousness, who have us pointing in the direction of sacrificial love. 
And those are the ones we need to admire because they are leading us closer to Jesus Christ. That's right. I hear the word obsessed a lot. Um, having a younger brother and sister that are in their early 20s, uh, that generation seems to um, say, I'm obsessed with that. I'm obsessed with her. I'm obsessed mm -hmm. with him. And uh, we really need to be obsessed with Jesus. That's right. uh, looking to the author and finisher of our faith and allowing him to guide us. So we just want to remind you that every day that a disciple we believe will do these four things and that's exalt God, encounter God, edify yourself by reading the word of God and engage this world for Jesus Christ. Um, and live your life so that you can invite others to say, hey, come follow me as I follow Christ. Until next time, God bless. God bless.